What's going on everybody? My name is Eric and welcome to the Flow Bass channel. So great to see you in another video, see all those smiling faces. Now today, I'm gonna show you guys how to install the Anchor Wizard onto your kayak. Now, you may not have the same kayak that I do, but there are many different mounting options available for the Anchor Wizard. So we're gonna go over all of those and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna mount it onto my kayak. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at all of the parts that I'm gonna be using in today's video. Obviously, we have the Anchor Wizard. This is the low profile model. There is a taller one that has a lot more rope. So if you're anchoring in depths greater than 45 feet, you might want to utilize that one, but for me, this is, you know, this is a shallow water application. So I went with the micro, or excuse me, the low profile. It's gonna just kind of keep things more tidy, not so bulky in here. Of course, it comes with different hardware. The hardware we're gonna be utilizing is these tapping plates right here. They're basically what slides into a gear track. Now, obviously you see here, I have an eight inch gear track with the following hardware. I'm gonna be utilizing this today. And last but not least, I have, well, this is my anchor, but it's actually a downrigging weight. This is a six pound uh, downrigging weight. It is very, very nice and compact. You can see how small it is in the palm of my hand here. Um, this is just, I think this is gonna work out best for me. I didn't wanna use any of those claw anchors or those you know, collapsible ones that have like the four arms. I know some people use kettlebells, that's perfectly okay, but I wanted the most compact anchor possible that was still you know six pounds it wasn't this big bulky thing just happened to be browsing the fishing section of a local marine store here in Broward County and I picked this guy up I thought it was perfect now aside from the anchor wizard and you know your mounting hardware and anchor things like that let's talk about the tools that you're going to need to perform this installation first up we've got a drill and I've got it chucked up with a Phillips head bit already I have a Phillips head screwdriver. Now you might be thinking this is, you know, a double negative here. Well, guys, you do not want to tighten down any hardware with this, not fully. That's, you always want to hand tighten any screw or anything, especially going into plastic or, you know, even into the gear tracks, you want to hand tighten it. You don't want to overpower it and strip out the screw or, you know, round out the head. The drill is only there to start the hole and then this finishes it up. I also have some various drill bits. Now, I most likely am not gonna be drilling into the kayak, but you might. But also, I have these drill bits here because I may need to drill into my anchor to mount it. I'm not sure yet, we'll just address that when we get there, but that should cover all of your bases to get this installed and running on your kayak. So the first step before you unpackage anything, you need to figure out where you're gonna mount the anchor wizard onto your kayak. Now my particular kayak comes with a lot of options. I've got a lot of factory gear tracks here. I've got some on the side gunnels right up here in the front above the front hatch. I also have some right here in the back too. But these tracks right here are pretty far away from the seat. I would basically have to lean all the way forward to get to here or you know stand up and i really don't think that that's just not going to work for me i want it to be as close to the seat as possible so i have to impart a minimal amount of movement one so you're extra quiet you're not spooking any fish and two operating the anchor all day if you have to bend up or stand up and move all the way over here you're going to get tired hi truck So I have the seat installed so I can get a good idea, a good lay of the land and figure out where I'm going to install this on my kayak. So that basically leaves the area from, let's say right about here, this line to, I don't know, maybe, maybe about right here. Cause I could just reach back and operate something here or I can lean forward, maybe mount it on this gunnel here. This gunnel right here looks like a prime mounting spot. However, I really don't want to mount anything right here because this is essentially the threshold entering and exiting the kayak. I don't want anything that I could trip on and fall over into the water or even just kick it and knock it off. That would absolutely be horrible. So this is definitely a no-no. Mounting it, you know, here on the deck, I want this to be clear and free. I wanna have, you know, as much room as possible so I'm comfortable and not knocking into things. So moving along to the side, I think I'm going to be mounting it right here on top of this pad. I really don't stand on these pads too much. I may mount it a little bit forward 
just in case I decide to stand back here, I'll have some room. I'll just play around with it, but I've chosen to mount it right here. And I'm gonna be doing it with this gear track because the Anchor Wizard comes with some gear track hardware, which I did mention earlier. Now taking a look at the Anchor Wizard, you can see there's plenty of mounting holes, so you can orient it in multiple different ways. You don't have to mount it inside a gear track. It does come with other screws, so you can mount it directly to you know, the deck or gunnel or wherever you see fit to mount this. You can drill directly in, or you can have it removable and adjustable. It's really just up to you. Something else you wanna think about when mounting the Anchor Wizard is having a clear path for the anchor line to run through your kayak. Since I'm choosing to mount it in this location, if we look down the kayak, I can run it right through the paddle holder if I want to. I can also have the line run right here through the seat track. And then moving forward here, you could see either whatever path I choose, here or here, I'll have a straight shot down the gunnel. I'll, I can even have the line pass through this little channel right here underneath the rod stager and then directly out in front of the kayak. Now before you go ahead and start drilling a whole bunch of holes in your kayak, you wanna go ahead and mock everything up, run the line, make sure everything is going to operate correctly before you lock it all down and make it a semi-permanent installation. So I have the Anchor Wizard mocked up. Again, none of this is screwed in or tightened down. I've ran my line the way that I feel is going to work the best. I've got it out here at the end because again, I'm using the Anchor Wizard for my front anchor. I have the power pole for the back. A couple of things that I want to talk to you guys about. First, this little guide right here, which is basically, it basically, you know, it swings down and it'll drop and point towards the water. You know, it basically is just like a dock for your anchor. It'll butt right up against this. Um, the anchors that spread open like this, it'll even hold them closed until you drop them. So while this is a great tool, I will not be using this. I just, looking at, you know, what I've got going on here in the front, I'm just not happy with, you know, the positioning, where I would have to ultimately end up putting this. So I will be omitting the use of this. Another thing to note is when I put tension on the line, you can see right here that the line kind of goes not directly over the foot pedal, but it's pretty close. So I'm not super happy with this. It's gonna require a trip to the hardware store. I've got an idea for that, which I will show you later. But right now we're just focused on getting this installed and I can always come back and take care of that. But other than that, I think I'm most happy with it right here. Um, I did get up and sit in here, even though the kayak is on some sawhorses, it was sketchy, but I am very happy with the positioning of this. And then I really am happy with running it underneath where my uh, paddle holder would be. And worst case scenario, I still can utilize the paddle holder if I have to. I've got one on the other side, so that's perfectly okay. And another quick little thought about utilizing this or not utilizing it, with the way that I'm installing the Anchor Wizard, I will be able to configure this many different ways. It's not gonna be a permanent installation. So I can take it apart and reconfigure it as I see fit, as you know my kayak evolves, as I start adding different accessories, I might wanna change it up. So in the future, I may actually use that piece. So I'm gonna hang on to it. I'm gonna hang on to the hardware. It's also something that you should think about as well. You should also keep in mind on how you're going to configure this because later on down the road, you may only have enough money or only want to have a very basic anchor system. And then you start throwing all kinds of stuff on your kayak like I am, it just, you know, you just get deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole. So you wanna be able to be flexible and change up your system without making total permanent changes to your kayak where there's gonna be big gaping holes left everywhere. It's no bueno. All right, so I've got the Anchor Wizard where I want it. I checked to make sure it's not gonna impede the operation of my seat anyway. So it definitely clears that. Just gonna suck in the rope, make sure we don't have anything dangling around. All right, so now I know that this gear track needs to be mounted in the direct center line of this pad right here. Whether I wanna mount it more to the bow or the stern, I really just need to figure that out. And also, if you need to purchase a separate gear track, you are going to want the eight inch. That is what works perfectly with the Anchor Wizard. The next step down is a four inch. It just, you're not gonna have enough room. Now the gear track comes with these tiny little screws. I think 
they will, it looks like they'll be able to penetrate the thickness of the pad and you know get enough meat of the kayak to keep this thing nice and sturdy. But if not, I will have to get new hardware. You know, I'm basically just doing this using you know my knowledge and I'm taking my time making sure everything's gonna get done right. So doing it right here on camera for you guys. So I'm gonna start with this hole right here. I'm just gonna use firm pressure so the gear track doesn't spin and just gonna slowly start drilling this hole. I should have known guys, the hardware that comes with the gear track is blunt. It's not pointed, so it's not gonna drill into the plastic. So I gotta drill a pilot hole, no big deal. Uh, I don't know what size this drill bit is. It is smaller than the hardware, which is what you want. Um, it was just a loose drill bit laying around, so I can't quote you what size, but all you gotta do guys is take your hardware, match it up, and as long as you see that it is smaller than your hardware, you're good. You don't want it to be too small, but you also don't want it to be too close to the actual size because you want the threads to have enough meat to grab. What I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna start on one corner and I'm gonna do the opposite corner and then lock that hardware in place so as I'm drilling the rest of the pilot holes, this doesn't walk around anywhere. Okay, that went, went through it like butter. Let me just make sure. Yeah, we got full penetration there. Actually, we're gonna be smart and do what I told you to do in the beginning of this video, utilize the screwdriver. Ah, oh, there we go. That's perfect. This is locked down, it's where I want it. Let's go ahead and zap the rest of these holes and get all the hardware installed. All right, so now we collect the hardware we're gonna use to mount the anchor wizard. Again, I'm gonna use the gear track hardware with these little nice thumb screws so it's not a permanent installation. If I ever have to take it off, if I throw it on top of the car or whatever, I can just take this thing off so you know it doesn't accidentally fly off, something hits it or whatever. I can stow it and then when I'm getting ready to go out on the water, get this thing installed, it'll only take just a couple minutes. All right, first one slid, slid in no problem. And there's the second one. So. Just all we have to do is lock down these little thumb screws. There's a little bit of side to side movement because it's not, the base of this is not flush onto the, onto the kayak. I may come back and carve out this pad and then remount the gear track so it sits, you know, flush against the actual plastic of the kayak instead of, you know, raised above it. But I don't know, for now this looks like it's pretty good. I can always come back and adjust it to how I need it to work. Next up, you wanna take your little carabiner. This is what you can attach directly to your anchor depending on what anchor you use. I found that this guy actually fits perfectly into that little loop built into my uh, downrigger weight. So I don't have to drill through this. I'm very, very thankful for that. So we're gonna put the weight aside, put it right on top of my seat. And then you just have to determine what knot you wanna to use to attach your anchor line to the carabiner. Now for the sake of easy serviceability, I'm actually going to tie a loop knot to this instead of, you know, normally maybe I would tie like a San Diego jam knot or something. That's, that's a typical fishing line I use. You guys are fishermen. You guys know how to tie knots. Tie whichever one is most comfortable for you. But again, keep in mind serviceability. So if you tie a loop knot, you can easily just unclip this from the loop and then clip it back on if you ever have to take anything apart or remove it for transportation and whatnot. If you tie like, you know, a permanent knot like a polymer or whatever, hopefully you can undo the knot and not have to cut the line every single time. Just something to think about. So if I ever need to take this off, I can just simply unclip it <laughs> like that, hopefully a little more gracefully. I could suck it into the anchor and then whenever I wanna take, put it back on, just clip it and then clip this end to my anchor and we're good to go. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you how to manage the line. Now Yak Attack does make a kit for this, but I decided to build it myself since I had spare hardware already. You can see that size of the eyelet I got from Lowe's and here's that spare Yak Attack hardware. So basically what you wanna do is just assemble everything first on the eyelet because you do have to cut this down. So put the little plastic knob on there as well as the tapping plate, screw it all the way on, 
and uh, it'll get, it'll help you gauge how much you need to cut down these eyelets. And you can always go back and do it again. Obviously, lock it down and cut it however you see fit. If you've got a cutoff wheel, great. And then unscrewing the tapping plate is going to take off any burrs on the end of that little bolt right there. So it'll just leave you with a nice clean cut. Obviously, we're sliding it in place. And uh, yeah, I did two of them. So this way it'll help manage the line the best. Ran the line through there and I'm gonna attach it to my anchor. And uh, yeah, really keeps the uh, line away from my foot pedal. That's why I did this and uh, hey, I made it myself. So you get some extra brownie points there. We have the line ran in the orientation that I showed you earlier, the way that I mocked it up. We've got the clip attached to my loop knot. I haven't trimmed the tag end yet just because I'm still working out the kinks, but I'm pretty happy with it so far. I've got the anchor attached, and we're gonna go ahead and test this baby out. All right, guys, so that was the installation of the Anchor Wizard on my kayak. I hope this helped you out in any way, shape, or form. Maybe if you're not sure about installing this, maybe it's giving you some inspiration, giving you some ideas with the way that I've kind of custom mounted it. This isn't really super custom, you guys. I may come back in here, carve out some of this pad a little bit. I'm not sure, I'm just gonna get out in the water, test it, and then come back. And if I do that, I'll give you guys an update video. Now, truth be told, guys, I actually haven't gone out and purchased those little loops that I have in the gear track up front there. I haven't done that yet. I'm adding those clips in after the fact. So just a little, I don't know, just this is how we gotta do it, guys. I don't wanna tear everything down, go out to the store by then. I'm gonna lose my daylight. So I'm recording this after or before the fact and installing those loops another day, but you guys never would have known if I didn't tell you. But yeah, those loops are key in managing the line. It just keeps everything oriented and out of the way. So yeah, they're definitely a lifesaver. So I hope this how-to video helped you guys out. I've got a lot more how-tos going on this kayak, so definitely stay tuned, and I will see you guys in the next video. My name's Eric. Thank you for watching the Flowbass channel. See you later. Peace out.